Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about some TradingView.com tips and tricks. So the first thing you'll notice when you go to TradingView is their landing page. It has a bunch of ideas uh, from various markets. Um, you can always go to Bitcoin. If you're new and you don't know anything about any indicators, patterns, blah, 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 and you just want to expose yourself to certain things, um, it's good to like look at people who sort of know what they're doing and at least get some idea of how to draw certain things, uh, even ideas for how to uh, how the charts look. Um, I know in the beginning I kind of like perused as much as I could just to see what was even possible on TradingView to do as far as like customizing things. Um, so again, you don't have to, you know, take these charts in as gospel or anything. Just look at them and see what people are doing. Uh, I know, like, putting text on charts was really interesting when I first uh, started and was trying to figure out what to do. Uh, so anyways, that's one thing. Uh, I normally, now, I, I don't look at really anybody's stuff on TradingView. Um, I just, it's not valuable to me. So the first thing you want to do, uh, definitely make a make an account, okay? Make an account. I've never had a pro account. I don't think it's really necessary. The reason you want to make an account is so you can save your charts and publish your charts. So I think TradingView is like the best website for charting Bitcoin. There are others like uh, Bitcoin Wisdom and Crypto Watch. Those are okay for specifically cryptocurrency, but uh, for Bitcoin, I think uh, TradingView is really like the the website to use. So I'll start off with some of my favorite and best tips and tricks, and then I'll get into sort of the nitty gritty UI stuff towards the end. Um, the first thing you'll notice about TradingView is all the tools, all the customization that's available. Um, so my favorite tip or trick is that uh, Control Z is a thing. Okay, <laughs> so let's say you accidentally delete something, you can always Control Z it back. Um, most people are aware of Control Z just because of Microsoft products, but uh, if you're not aware that it works on TradingView, definitely take advantage of that and use it. Another thing you can do, um, like this chart. It's basically a mess. There's stuff all over the place. Uh, if I just want to remove everything, I can just click this trash thing, this trash symbol, and it'll remove everything, clean it up. It'll keep the indicators on the chart. Um, so to put all those back, again, just Control z And then let's say I, I don't want to delete stuff, but I don't want to see it. You can use this uh, hide all drawing tools. That's also helpful. Um, something that's cool that I like to do is sort of like, go between using my drawing tools and my indicators, and you can hide these indicators as you see fit. So that's uh, something you should be aware of. So my the most absolute best trick and tip for TradingView is how to save charts without a pro account. So TradingView lets you save five charts, okay? So because Bitcoin has so many exchanges, uh, like, for instance, BTC, USD. I mean, look at how many exchanges there are. Plus there's futures, okay? And that's just in USD. You can go to CNY if you want. There's even more, okay? Now, I try to chart CNY just because of the volume. There's more volume in CNY. Uh, so what I do is I have five, up to five save charts, right? And you might be thinking, ah, uh, I should get a pro account. I can save more. But for Bitcoin, what you can do, you can keep one idea on Bitfinex, for instance, and then you can go to BTC, CNY, uh, go to OKCoin, OK have a completely different set of drawing tools, uh, ideas, etc. Okay, so that's a way. So it's basically, I'm going to use the word infinite, but it's not infinite. It's an infinite amount, infinite amount of ideas that you can generate uh because of the number of exchanges and the ability to save those separately, uh, even on the same quote unquote saved chart. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything and I sort of lose stuff sometimes. Um, but that's a, you know, that's a disadvantage of not having a pro account, I guess, but it works for me fine. Um, the other thing you want to do is is start publishing charts. Um, even if you're like not comfortable with stuff that you're generating and pumping out there, um, I wish I 
I had published stuff more early on. That way, it's really more more for you than for anybody else because it shows you like how far you've come as a trader and tracks sort of like the UI changes you've made. I mean, you could see my charts in the beginning were just absolute trash, basically, um, compared to where they've where they've come now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so. I'd, I'd advise doing that, not necessarily for sharing them, but for uh, just, you know, watching yourself grow as, like, a trader or whatever. Should, should that be your plan? Another common question I get is, how can I save your theme or your background or how your chart looks to my charts? Uh, so an example of how we can do that, you can go to anybody, I'm just going to use me, uh, you can go to their ideas. Uh, of so click the chart you like of the background or the indicator or whatever you whatever you want it to be uh, go to share on the left side and then you hit make it mine and once you make it yours it saves the chart in your account and you can edit and manipulate the chart as you wish and that includes saving any of the themes or backgrounds or uh, any of those sorts of things on your charts as well the other great trick I discovered recently um, is uh, I've always wanted to have like double pane, uh, multiple charts on one chart, uh, but because I don't have a pro account, I can't use this this layout tool. Okay, what you can do is you can go to compare, type in a symbol. It takes a second to load. Go to let's add OK coin here. So it'll add that as like a line chart. Now what you can do is you can unmerge this up or down, and it'll create it in its own pane. And then you can you can edit this. Uh, you can draw on this separately from this other chart here, and that's basically the same as this. I mean it's not exactly the same, but it's good enough I think for a non-pro account. So and then you can. You can delete it, you can add indicators, uh, like I think you can merge this up, yeah. I can add cloud to anything, to that, you know, any indicator you want. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you want, you know, four, four charts on one window uh, without a pro account. Another interesting uh, thing you can do that I haven't really found much use for is uh, combining indicators or putting indicators on the chart directly. Some people, for instance, like their RSI like directly on the chart so they can see it like in the background. Um, if you ever want to just make one pane uh, full screen, you just double click and it'll save everything else. It won't delete anything. You can just double click again to unfull screen that. Um, but that way, if you want to zoom in on you know one one part of the indicator or one pane, you can do that. Uh, so as far as merging things up and down, I'm just gonna just show you what that is. So you can copy the whole indicator, paste it, uh, and then what I'm gonna do, so I've only really found use for this for Bollinger Band width because of the way that the layout works. So we, you merge this up, and then what you can do you can turn off whatever you want to turn off. So if you turn off the plot, then you can just see that, uh, you know, when price is above the median or below the median, it'll highlight that. Some people don't even use this, and they just, uh, you know, leave that on the chart. That way, in full screen or whatever, you can see how tight the squeezes are without having another indicator uh, down here. Now, as far as the UI is concerned, uh, you'll notice that this will toggle auto scale. So sometimes when I'm like moving between, uh, it, it moves the chart and it's frustrating because I'm like, ah, what's going on? So all you have to do to take it out of auto scale is just click and slide this scale here. Uh, and that way everything is sort of like dragging. Um, you can drag it around without being confined to the auto scale. And if you ever just want to snap it back on, you just click it again. Um, I try to keep my charts in log. I'll show you an example of why. So if it's not in log, you can get sort of weird visuals if you're um, comparing 
values that are greater than like a hundred dollars. Um, so here, this is like the all-time high. This was uh, June 23rd, 2015. All-time high, I was to a, a point, and I was comparing this triangle. And I mean, you can see visually how much different it looks in uh, linear versus log scaling. And that's sort of, you know, depending on what you're trying to say, you might want linear scaling versus log scaling. I just try to keep it in log scaling just to keep it consistent. And other toolbox things, just be aware of what's available, even if you don't use it. Uh, there's a ton of stuff just here on the toolbox. There are also a ton of indicators. It's more things than you'll ever, ever use or know about. Um, most of it kind of is junk, but uh, there are basically an infinite amount of indicators that you can play around with, okay? Tons of stuff. Not only that, but you can also use PineScript to make your own indicators. Uh, so lastly, just wrapping this up, a few other things for the UI. Magnet mode is interesting because what it does is sort of lock your cursor on like wicks of, of the candles or the bodies. Let me just turn on harmonics. So if you're trying to draw something exactly on a wick, it'll uh, snap that to the wick without your cursor being exactly there. So that's pretty interesting. Then one final thing is uh, taking a snapshot of your chart. You'll see this uh, snapshot Instagram button. And uh, what you can do is you can you can save the image. And this is what I do so that uh, when you're on Twitter, for instance, you can see it in the, in the tweet, in the thumbnail. Um, so you go back to your, your saved image and you can save it to your computer and then upload it uh, to Twitter. I know it's a pain in the ass, but that's what I do to make sure that people might people see my charts. I know if, if I post a chart with a link, fewer people will tend to like look at it if it's a picture. Um, and the other thing is it uh, the other thing is it'll it'll save your chart as a its own URL so you can always paste it around Telegram or Twitter, uh, any mobile messaging if you want to. Uh, so those are my tips and tricks for trading view. If you've got any of your own, let me know in the comments. As usual, happy trading.